Hi everyone, my name is Roberto Barbera and I welcome you to this another tutorial. In this tutorial we will be talking about persistent identifiers for researchers and research outputs. In particular, I will touch uh, at issues like uh, disambiguation, authorship and visibility of researchers and I'll show you what ORCID is and what ORCID does in this respect. And then I will discuss discoverability, findability, citability, reproducibility, reusability of research outputs. And I will be talking about persistent identifiers and uh, digital object identifiers, namely the data site ones. And then I will come to the summary and conclusions. So when you have uh, uh, big papers published by large collaboration, it's not rare that you have uh, different people with the same name or the same researchers signing different papers with a little bit different names like first name last name or last name first name or last name comma initial of first name so this is a, a, a kind of a peculiar example where you have uh, lots of people having the same last name and people confused about who's who be, uh, among the uh, signatories of the paper. In order to solve this problem, ORCID was born a few years ago. ORCID stands for Open Researchers and Contributor ID and it basically assigns a permanent and unique identifier to all researchers so that irrespective of uh, different researchers can be signing different papers, the ORCID ID referring to the single researchers is the same and permanently the same. ORCID is a hub. Using the ORCID ID, researchers can connect to their employer to assert affiliation. They can connect to the publisher to assert authorship. And they can connect to funding agencies to assert awards. So, what is ORCID about for researchers? ORCID provides persistent digital identifiers that distinguishes you from every other researchers. So, ORCID allows to you to register, to add informations like education, like works, like uh, fundings, like uh, uh, your roles, and then the possibility to use ORCID IDs, for example, to incorporate in your personal web pages or to send or to attach it to your email or to send to publishers. ORCID is open. ORCID is a not-for-profit organization, worldwide organizations, is platform neutral, is an international service that integrates with other research identifiers, is free for individuals, but uh, is uh, also, also provides services for organizations. It uh, provides open data and APIs and documentation in case your own applications want to use ORCID IDs and information contained in the ORCID profiles. ORCID provides the following features for free. For individuals, they may register, maintain a share, they receive updates on their ORCID records and they enter nomination for the ORCID steering community. Uh, the community may access annual data files or public information and organizations may integrate ORCID IDs into research systems. And this is very, uh, this is very helpful and convenient when it comes to uh, periodically evaluate researchers and research organizations. So, First of all, we will now, I will now show you a short screencast on how to create an ORCID ID and an ORCID profile. In order to get an ORCID ID, you should register to ORCID. To do so, you go with your web browser to https colon slash slash orchid.org and then when it says register you click on register now then you have to fill this uh, form you should fill it with your first name last name 
the primary email address, any other additional email address, then you can uh, create your own ORCID password, confirm it, and then you should set your visibility settings. Choose if you want to receive quarterly emails about new ORCID features, accept the terms of use, and then confirm you are not a robot uh, clicking on this capture. Once you click on register, you will get an email to confirm your email address. And once the confirmation of your email address has been done, your credentials, ORCID credentials, will be activated. Then you can go back to the ORCID homepage and add your own info. To do so, you should first sign in, put your email or ORCID ID, put your passport, and then sign in into ORCID. Here, you can have uh, different sections. So on the left frame, you can add uh, other names you are also known, the country, keywords of your research discipline, websites, email addresses, and other IDs, for example, here, researcher ID. On the main frame, you can add your biography, your education, your employment, your funding, the project you have been received funding for, and at the end, your publications. And publication by publication or project by project, you can define if uh, this should be visible to everyone just to trusted parties or only to yourself. Once you have done this uh, filling, you can sign out from the ORCID profile. Okay, so let's come back to the presentation. So as a short recap, ORCID is an opt-in system. The account owners can create, edit and maintain their ORCID records for free and display where they are educated, where they work, the activities they are funded for, publications, research data, and so on. Uh, another very interesting feature of ORCID is that you can automatically search for your publications or your data sets or research objects in general and either manually or automatically link to your ORCID profiles. For example, Starting from the ORCID profile, you can connect to publishers and to Crossref. Crossref is a huge platform for scientific references. And using Crossref, you can link your own publication to your ID using digital object identifiers. And I'll show you later on how this can actually be done. In very interesting and useful, many publishers require ORCID. Over 1,500 journals now require ORCID IDs. ORCID, as I said, is not only for researchers, but it's also for organizations and member organizations. Membership is important because ORCID is a not-for-profit organization funded through organizational membership and subscription fees. Members receive several benefits, re receive the access to special APIs to query the ORCID database to gather data for researchers of their organizations, and they can, uh, um, they can receive personalized technical support, integrated application user acceptance, acceptance testing, monthly newsletters, and invitation to public events. ORCID membership is not free. Uh, while ORCID profiles are free and they will be free forever. ORCID memberships are not free, but there are very interesting fees. There is a, a basic uh, membership fee of uh, 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 slightly above $5,000 for a single nonprofit organizations. 
you can have a premium fee, but what's important and uh, what be also useful for uh, um, countrywide membership to ORCID is the possibility to create consortia. So if you have uh, more universities gathering together and becoming ORCID member, ORCID members, the uh, fees are reduced. But uh, you can find all this information on the ORCID website. So summarizing, over 5 million researchers across the world as of today, more than 700 members from 40 countries and 18 consortia of members in Australia, Canada, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, New Zealand, South Africa, Taiwan, UK and the US. And over 500 integrations across all sectors of the research communities. For more information about ORCID, visit https colon slash slash orchid.org slash help. Now, let's come to another aspect of uh, science, scientific research, which is about the so-called rates of science. Once you have your scientific results, what's important is that you can repeat, replicate, reproduce, and in the end reuse the scientific, your scientific results, especially if the data have been taken with public funds. So reusability of scientific results is very important, and there is a big movement called FAIR that has uh, one grand challenge, that is to facilitate knowledge discovery by assisting humans and machines in their discovery of and access to integration and analysis of task appropriate scientific data and their associated algorithms and workflows. The FAIR community has come up with uh, the so-called FAIR principle. A FAIR is an acronym, F stands for findable, A for accessible, I for interoperable and R for reusable. And you can see all the FAIR data principle in these slides. Now I want to talk about one of the important FAIR principle, the so-called F1, that uh, uh, calls for the needs of globally unique and eternally persistent identifiers. So you may be already um, used to persistent identifiers or to reference management in general. Persistent identifiers are often created within institutional administrative system and there are many things. There are arts, digital object identifiers, handles, persistent uniform resource locators, uniform resource names and extensible resource identifiers. What a DOI is? Uh, DOI is basically a unique string that uh, identifies the prefix allocated to the organization and the suffix chosen by the organization and the unique identifier. You may be already familiar with DOIs because many scientific publications have DOIs and DOIs can be used to uniquely cite and reference that particular publication. So, what a persistence identifier is? A persistence identifier is a long-lasting reference to, initially was a digital resource, but in the PID evolution now we can issue PIDs to any kind of resources. So you can see here uh, the different aspect of a PID, provenance, metadata, machine readability, policies, and guarantees. And you can uh, uh, discover more about PIDs in the reference cited at the bottom of the slide. There are many kinds of uh, PIDs, and they are usually issued by so-called registration agencies. And you can see a bunch of those registration agencies in the, um, in the slide. One that is becoming very interesting when it comes to cite not only publications, but also um, data sets connected to publications, uh, software connected to data sets, and so on, is DataCite, DataCite Digital Object Identifiers. 
Datasize is a leading global not-for-profit organization that provides persistent identifiers for research data and all other research outputs. Datasize supports the creation and allocation of DOIs and accompanying metadata. They provide services that support the enhanced search and discovery of research contents and they promote data citation. So, how DOIs relate to ORCID? As I said, you can, uh, I already mentioned that you can automatically link your publications stored, for example, on Crossref to your own ORCID profile. But using data side DOIs, you can extend this and you can automatically connect and link the research objects that have a data site DOI to your ORCID profile. So you, when you enter your own ORCID profile, then among the external sources of references, you can use a data site, then you can look for uh, yourself on the data site metadata catalog. Yourself means your ORCID ID and all the different ways you may be a signatory of the different papers. And you can search for this and then retrieve the list of publications that are stored on, di on uh, digital repositories uh, using data site DOIs to tag the different records. And then you can discover, for example, one of your paper and automatically add to ORCID. Now, I want to show you a short screencast to demonstrate how you can link the research objects stored on the Nadra repository to your ORCID profile using digital object identifiers. In order to connect your search outputs to your ORCID profile, the first thing is to visit the ORCID homepage at https colon slash slash orchid.org and sign in to the service. You put your email address or ORCID ID, your password, and then you sign in. Then your ORCID profile is created on the flight. You can scroll down until you reach your works part, the works part of your page, and then you click on add works and then search and link. Here you have all the external sources you can retrieve uh, research outputs from and you select the data site. Then you are redirected to the uh, data site profiles and you can either manually add works to your ORCID record or automatically have works in the data site metadata store added to your ORCID record. Let's choose the first option. And then here there is all the different ways I'm now as author of my papers or data sets. This is the number of words I can connect to my ORCID profile. And here, the resource types, the publication here, the registration here, and the data centers. This means the open access repositories that contains my research outputs. Here, Ethiopian Education and Research Network is the NADRA repository. So I can reduce the number of works and retrieve only those that are stored on the NADRE, clicking here. Here, seven works only are stored in the NADRE repository, and here you can see, for example, the presentations I made at the NADRE kickoff meeting early in February this year. Then I can select one of these, and I can add to my ORCID record, just click to add to ORCID record. And I can do for all the 
research output stored in the NADRE repository. So let's come back to the uh, presentations. Uh, I want to highlight one thing which is very important that could be interesting for Ethiopian organizations but also for the whole Africa. In January 2017, the University of Catania established an agreement with the Conference of Italian University Rectors, which is the Italian member of uh, uh, DataSight, to extend the possibility to provide the DOI prefixes to all African organizations wishing to deploy an institutional open access repository. Five DOI prefixes have been released so far, one in the context of the SciGaia project, and four to other or, uh, African organizations. One of these is the Minister of Education of Ethiopia for Ethernet, and the data site DOI prefix released to the Ministry of Education in Ethiopia has been connected to the NADRE repository. The DOI prefix for Ethiopia was actually requested and approved at a very high political level. The request letter was signed by the Ministry and the acceptation was countersigned by the president of the CRUI, which is uh, uh, one of the rector, one is a rector of the Italian universities. Some useful endpoints concerning data sites, the schema to describe an object in the data site, the store, the search engine, statistics, and the uh, open archive initiative public metadata harvesting provider. So, summarizing, concluding, ORCID allows to increase researchers' disambiguation, authorship, and in the end, visibility. While data site DOIs allow discoverability, findability, citability, reproducibility, and in the end, reusability of research outputs. Research outputs stored on the NADRA repository and tagged with the data site DOIs can be connected either manually or even automatically to the ORCID profiles of the Ethiopian scientists to increase the number of their publication and hence their visibility. Thank you very much.